Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Matt from Matt Brady Fitness. In today's video, I wanna cover the essentials of what you need to get started with your very first garage gym. Obviously, you need a barbell. You want a seven foot Olympic barbell. When you are looking for a used barbell, let's say you have a budget of like 100 bucks or less. Now, there's a couple of choices. You can go the beater bar route, which is what I went with, or you could go something on the cheap end like with Titan. So now I wanna show you the first beater bar I had. It's called the bomb bar. It's literally a cartoon looking bomb on the end of the sleeve that I got for $79.99 at Played Against Sport. Now, I'm actually glad that I started off with the beater bar. Um, a beater bar just means like any generic barbell. There's no known branding or anything like that. It's just some company that it made barbell and it works. So <clears throat> I bought my first one at Played Against Sports where you can buy stuff secondhand used and the, it was 80 bucks, and when I went there, I looked for a couple different things. One, does it have rust? Two, how do the sleeves actually spin? And three, is there any like really bad rust damage on the sleeves, on the shafts, on the knurling, anything like that? And even if it did, would I be able to clean it up with some three-in-one oil and a uh, nylon brush type thing? So those are my three requirements for buying a beater bar. The other thing you need is a good set of plates. Now, now, when I started off, if I remember correctly, I think I actually started off with some hard diamond rubber bumper plates, which is just some generic brand that Walmart had. And it, Diamond's actually a company, um, but I haven't really bought anything else by them. But that's what I started off with because it was really affordable and this was well before COVID hit. So it was a really good price for what I was getting. Um, I do remember buying some cat barbell plates after that. Cap uh, is another you know company that's just, it's pretty much in any major sporting goods store, I would say in the country. And I still use cap plates to this day. Like, well, actually, no, I didn't, I'm sorry. I actually sold my cap plates recently, I forgot. Um, what I'm actually using now are fringe sport bumper plates. I had sold the diamonds, I sold the caps, and um, I have one pair of diamond crumb bumper plates left. I forgot about that. So um, they work fine, but you have to ask yourself, you know, am I gonna feel comfortable doing deadlifts on concrete or not concrete, but like you're definitely gonna need some kind of padding. Like I wouldn't put like carpet padding or carpet. You don't wanna cheap out on this. You wanna make sure you get some solid horse sole mats, like you can get a tractor supply. You can buy some on Amazon. I can't vouch for those. I can only vouch for the ones that I bought from Tractor Supply because that's where I got them. Um, but they should run you about 45 bucks, 40 to 45 bucks for a four by six. Um, if you haven't seen my review on that one, check it out. It's a, one of my more popular reviews just to help you understand what, how many you're gonna need and um, you know why they're, they're so useful. So anyways, when I started off, I had these um, like soft spongy puzzle pieces that I use for my floor. Um, I'll have some pictures in there to show you. And although they worked and I could do my deadlifts and everything else, I didn't feel comfortable using metal plates. I was kind of paranoid that what if after, you know, an endless amount of repetitions, that concrete underneath the um, spongy foam material, there started like hairline cracks or major cracks, whatever kind of cracks. And I just didn't feel comfortable with that anymore. I'm like, so, you know, that's gotta go. That's why I got rid of that floor and I eventually got the horse stall mats. I started asking people around like, um, you know, that I was meeting in the fitness community or just online um, when I was buying stuff. I'm like, well, you know, where, where do you get these mats at? Like, or even at a CrossFit gym, like, where do you get these mats? You know, and that's just kind of how I figured it out. I just started asking people questions. So um, in any event, yeah, like I, got rid of my metal plates and then I went with the hard rubber diamond plates. I still didn't feel comfortable with that. Then I got the extra bouncy ones, which were the crumb, the crumb plates, which are more, um, they're more bouncy. They're thicker and they're bouncier, but they're not really intended for powerlifting because you'll run out of barbell space uh, on your sleeves if you're trying to do deadlift. Um, for example, like that's the issue I ran into. They're really meant for like CrossFit, like throwing them up, let them drop down, that kind of thing. So. Yeah, um, I the crumb plates are fine, but if you're if you're doing deadlifts and you don't have proper horse stall mats, 
you could probably get away with those metal plates, but I mean, you know, you're taking a risk. I mean, you might be doing some damage to the floor. I can't vouch for that personally because I only lifted once and I was like, you know what? No, I value like reliability, stability, and I don't want any issues. So I just got rid of mine at the time and that's when I went to the diamond hard rubber plates. Now those diamond hard rubber plates, they worked out just fine, but still in my mind, I was like, you know, you're getting closer to 400 pounds. That's still a lot of impact. I still didn't feel comfortable. So I got rid of the puzzle pieces that I had purchased on Amazon and I went with the horse stall mats instead. Okay, so now that we've covered the beater bar that you can get and a set of Olympic size two inch hole weight plates, the only other thing you really need is a rack or a squat stand. Like I said earlier, the TDS Power Rack is a good entry level power rack. I think it's important to go with a power rack first, especially one that's affordable. Only because, <clears throat> what if you don't stick with working out? What if you don't stick with power lifting or doing some kind of programming? Everybody's different, but it would really suck to spend like eight, nine hundred bucks on a rogue rack and end up having to sell it you won't take too much of a loss because you always people pretty much pay for the retail price minus tax and shipping however it still just really sucks to spend that and give up with that much money I made the decision to sell the TDS power rack and I bought a rogue fitness s2 squat stand the only thing I needed to order for that was just some safety spotter arms for bench press and to help me fail safely forward when I'm doing squats if you're already really experienced doing squats and bench press and all that stuff, then I would say the squat stands are fine with the safety spotter arms. You just have to consider how are you going to fail when you're squatting, most importantly. So if you're going to dump the weight, obviously you're, you're going to want to make sure there's nobody behind you or any cars in the garage. Um, if you're nervous about that or maybe you have kids or a dog or a cat or whatever running around, then yeah, I mean, I think a, a power rack might be a better choice for you, but just little things that you need to consider. Um, definitely the power rack will be safer for those reasons of having the four uprights and those safety pins in the middle. But a squat sand, if you're new to the market, let's say you're single, um, or even if you're married or dating and you just, you know, you, you're starting off with your garage gym, squat sand can still work. Just be careful and mindful of your environment, that's all. Finally, the last thing you need is just a good, reliable bench. You can get an adjustable bench if you plan on doing inclines and using the bench for other exercises like reverse dumbbell rows or um, you know incline press or whatever. Or you could just get a flat bench if you plan on just doing bench press and you know those kinds of motions. One important note: when I started off with my garage gym, I had this uh, cheap Adidas bench, flat bench that was like maybe 50 bucks that I found on Amazon. It worked fine. Um, I had to tighten it up here and there, and it, it worked fine just to support my weight. And whatever you do, don't cheap out on a good bench. So you'll see this little flat steel bench thing that I found. <laughs> It was an old high school bench and I'm surprised they were even using it because there was really no anchoring to this um, system. I didn't see any bolts in the frame to like bolt it to the floor or anything like that. And you know, it's top heavy. So when you throw that weight back up on the bench, on the uh, arms, you know, you could in theory flip that bench if you threw enough force and momentum on it, especially if you're taller. Um, so I would really not recommend getting a bench like what you see in this video here just make sure you get something better <laughs> all right guys that's my review on getting your garage gym started for the first time i hope you really enjoyed the video if you found something of value the best thing you can do is to share this video with your friends it really helps me out it, i'm a small channel and i really appreciate everybody subscribing already leaving me questions leaving me comments i love getting those and i try to get to those as fast as i can um, but yeah, just share this video with your friends. Don't forget to smash the notification bell. Don't forget to smash the like button and I'll talk to you guys later.